Your first year, Ronnie, uh, obviously with Australia being so strong and you being this great talent, that you were rode for Australia. You haven't always been an Australian. When did you have to make a decision on Australia and New Zealand? I think, I'm not even sure myself now, but I think a couple of years after I'd arrived in England, okay, the first year I did get picked as a reserve for an Australian test match and got the last two in. The following year I was in the Australian test team all the time. But then we started New Zealand matches and well, I had a year of riding for Australia and New Zealand, which was a little bit complicated. And a control board stepped in and said, what are you? And I said, well, I've got a New Zealand passport, so I'm New Zealand. So I'll ride for New Zealand. Australia created Mary Hell, but there's, it was my choice. There's nothing they could do about it. So from then I rode for New Zealand. A very hard decision, Ronnie. What, what put you on the New Zealand side? It wasn't a hard decision, really. Uh, New, Zealand, New Zealand side, because, well, fundamentally, I live here now. Other than that, all my friends, well, basically, were New Zealanders. We're travelling backwards and forwards from here to England all the time. No, it wasn't a hard decision at all. It was, in fact, a quite easy decision. But while I could ride for Australia and make money riding for Australia as well, I thought, might as well cash in on it. Yeah, well, it must have cost you a lot of money picking to ride for New Zealand. Well, in a sense, yes, but me, as far as Speedway concerned, I wasn't really worried about money. As long as you had enough to pay the bill, that's all I was happy. I was happy just riding and having fun. And more well, money was just a, a secondary thing. What did your dad think of picking New Zealand? Well, he was back here by then, but he didn't mind at all. I mean, he was a real true Aussie too, but he could see the light. Well, I was phoned him on this one, in actual fact. I'd already made the decision. He said, no, well, we're, we're based here now, so you've got to be a New Zealander. Did, for the World Championship, did you change the way you prepared for the, for the World Final compared with a normal league match or test match? Mm. No, not really. I mean, he had to take them out the bits naturally and just check everything over, but as long as the big was okay, we just put it back together. And at Wembley, we used to always have the practice on a Thursday and go out and have a practice. The big worked okay, and that was it, just clean the bike for Saturday. It's just another meeting, if you want it, nice, but if you didn't, well, it's not the end of the world, it's, it's just another meeting, as far as I was concerned anyway. Question's gone. Um, hmm. I've lost. I've lost my train of thought on that. In the World Championship, you had a, you had a little bit of bad luck. You probably should have won the World Championship before you won it. Um. No, not really. In 1953, I think it was. I'd won my first three rides and my tank fell off in the fourth one. And I'm trying to hold it up to finish the ride because I was in front and the chain cut through the fuel line and I ran out of fuel. I got third in that championship, so that wasn't bad. But if the tank hadn't fallen off, quite possibly I would have won that one. Yeah. How, how did you feel the next morning? I was a little bit browned off in actual fact because one pea little bolt had come undone but you know, ah, what the hell, it's always next year, that's what I was always thinking. So that, that was bad luck. <coughs> it seemed, uh, just reading the books and listening and asking around, it seemed as though some, you always didn't quite make it through no real fault of your own. Maybe, did you get nervous, do you think? <sighs> well, I don't think I did get nervous. you win all the races in the yeah. run-up to the to the yeah. world final and you you looked odds on that you must win it there was always something just getting in your way to start with no well in 54 the first year that i did win it i'd broken my knee 
in five places in Denmark a month beforehand, so everyone said, that's it. But a New Zealand surgeon worked wonders and put a metal brace on my leg. I went to the practice and it was hurting, but Freddie Williams came up to me and he said, you're going to win it. I told him, go take a run. He said, no, you're going to win it. He said, I've been clocking everyone and from the start to the pit gate, you're the fastest. Well, I just took that with a grain of salt anyway. But on the night, because of my leg, and I thought I had no chance, well, I was really and truly relaxed. And because I was relaxed, not tensed up or anything else, and I wasn't a very good gator at the best of time, but I made starts, and next thing I'd won five races and won it. But then you take the next year. I go to Wembley, and, oh, hell, I won it last year, and I'm going to win it. This year, I was determined to win it. And I missed by one point and finished them up. But I think it's got to be your attitude to a great extent. You can't get too screwed up tight, otherwise your muscles just not working right. You're not relaxed enough. So in other words, being injured gave you that little bit of relaxation to be world champion? Yes, it definitely did. I mean, in, again in 59, I broke my left foot and I had to tie a steel plate on the, on the right foot, sorry. I had to tie a steel plate on the bottom of it. Well, I could stand on the footrest, but it hurt a bit. So there was a, well, there's another one um, here for the meeting. But there again, everything clicked smoothly because I've, well, relaxed, I think, more than anything else. And next thing I've done five lovely rides and got that one again. So I think being relaxed, if you can be relaxed, is the important thing. In in the 50s, you know, th there was big names around that never ever were world champions, like the Warrens and those people. H how did you v view these riders? Was there anybody in that 50 era that you th should have been world champion, in your opinion, that didn't make it? <sighs> well, that basically is debatable. I mean, there's lots of people that were getting close and borderline and all the rest of it. And Warren was one blonde bombshell. He was an obvious one. Everyone had odds on him winning it and did nothing. That was a big night one too. And I think that is what affected a lot of these guys. The big night one, they were just trying too hard and making foul ups. Was there anybody else besides Warren that you can stick out in your mind? <sighs> not, not really. It was sort of the uh, top little group again. And they were the people there, like Jack Young, he won it twice in a row, Freddie Williams. And they were the established ones that were well, on the books, should have won it. And then of course, you appeared, Ovi Funden appeared, and so the cycle went on. Freddie Williams had a home advantage at Wembley. Was he a good world champion? <sighs> he was a good world champion from the point of view that, okay, he had a home advantage, but that basically is immaterial. And as a Welshman, I think they look at life a different way, Welsh people. I'm pretty certain they do, I'm convinced they do. And he used to do some funny things as far as motor wire is concerned, just to save money, but the damn things used to still go. It used to amaze me that they did go, where he'd use second-hand parts sometimes to make the motor go. Yeah, what a, Tommy Price? Tommy, he was a real pro, but a pro in those days wasn't liked by anyone, not even the other riders. He was a dedicated man, but that's it, I think he was also too dedicated, and because of it, you know, things didn't work out that good. Uh, he won one World Championship. Was he capable of winning more than one World Championship? Tom, I would say, was borderline. He had to fundamentally, well, like these days now, get out the gate. He was good at getting out the gate, but I don't know, he had a, it's hard to explain, he had a, a funny attitude, and that's why he didn't get on good with other riders. I mean, I personally, when I went to England, thought, God, this is it, the world champion. Terrific. And he actually told me on the first practice at Wimbledon, certain thing he had to get around the corner. And I thought, he's a mighty man.